zero force members. Now, please realize that it's not that you would feel comfortable with that member not being there, maybe for structural stability, but in terms of the amount of force that that member is called upon in relationship to its capacity, we treat that as though it is essentially a zero force member. Um, a clean way to find zero force members is look for the T-joint in a truss, all right? So if I've got a T-joint in a truss and I have no load being applied at that joint, then this member is going to be a zero force member. All right. Now that's altogether different if I apply a load here because now I need this member to do something. Okay. Um, think about it from the standpoint of if I have um, a member and another member and I pull on these, well, they end up being self-straightening. And if I don't have a load being applied at this joint, but I have a member here, I even put it on an angle. There's nothing for this member to do because the force has a line of action and a straight line between those. So this would be a T joint, even though it's on an angle, there's no load applied at this joint, that would be a zero force member. Um, even if this member is in compression, you might want this member, you might want this member here for some sense of stability, but for the small deflections and small movements that we're designing to, this member is essentially, if there's no load being applied at this joint, this member doesn't have any <coughs> demand as long as these stay in straight alignment. Another way of looking at it is that all these are pin connected members. If there is a force here, these two members don't give any resistance to that force. So it ends up finding another path within the system to be resolved. All right, any questions on that? Be happy to answer them. Any questions on the zero force members?